All right, hey guys, Mr. Kyle, Myers Mathematics, and let's just jump right into it. This is a video that I actually skipped over that was actually supposed to be done more like at the beginning of this series on Algebra 1 worksheets. This is about the constant of variation. This is specifically direct variation versus indirect variation, which would be like the opposite of direct variation. Um, I would talk about it more in this video, but it's not in this worksheet. So this one is going to be fairly straightforward, but I'll explain some of the background stuff as we go. If you don't care about the background stuff and you just you know want the answers, you can always just Google it because the answers are online. You actually don't need to watch this video to get the answers if you're looking for the answers. So don't waste your time. But if you want the explanation for why the answers are the way they are, that's where this video is gonna come in handy. So, for number one, the answer is 14, because when we say the constant of variation, you might think like, oh, well a constant, isn't a constant like a like a plus C constant? C for constant. Isn't, isn't a constant like a number that's by itself, not a number that's multiplied by X? So, if you remember right, about lines, then the B is sort of like the constant. That's the constant. And this is what's called a coefficient. Coefficient. However, constants and coefficients are both supposed to be numbers. When I have a line, like for instance, y equals 2x plus 1. The 2 would be the coefficient, the 1 would be the constant, but they're both numbers, so they're kind of like together, they're related, they're, I wouldn't say they're like kind of the same thing, because they're not kind of the same, but other than them both being numbers. This is more like a slope though. It's more like a coefficient than a constant. You might be thinking that, if, and if you are, you're, you're, you're kind of right, actually. It is like a coefficient, not like a constant. However, they didn't say it was just the constant that we're looking for. They said the constant of variation. So what, what does that even mean, right? So, so this is a coefficient, or another thing you could call this is the, the amount of variation. It's the amount of variation. And it's called that because slope is how much you change by, right? You go rise over run. Right? You, go, you go up and then you go over. So it's a variation. It's varying, right? It's, it's changing. It's varying. Variation is another way to say it's changing. So when we say the constant of variation, then we're actually looking for Something that's changing, but doing it at a constant kind of way, right? And that might seem a little contradictory, but think about it this way. Let's say you're driving or uh, you're driving with your, your parents or whoever, and, and they're just cruising, right? They're just cruising on the road, let's say the interstate, uh, or it could be just be a, a back road or something that they're on for a while. Well, at, at some point, it's like you've reached the speed you want to go. And you either just, you know, keep going that speed more or less, or you set the cruise control and then you pretty much go that speed unless you're on a really hilly road. And then you'll, you know, speed up as you go down and, and slow down as you go up. But if you're on a fairly level road and then you cruise, well, you're, you're moving though, right? So you're not constant in a sense of like you're not moving, but you are constant in a sense of like you're not speeding up or slowing down. Right? So when we say constant of variation, this is kind of like the slope, but it's not going to change, right? Lines don't change slope. Curves do. Curves change slope. It's like curving upward, so it's increasing in speed. But a line doesn't increase in speed. It's one, <laughs> it's one speed the whole time, right? So that's why they're asking for the constant of variation that, that's in the way they are, because this is the slope, which is 
the constant and variation for a line. This is slope, which is 2. And therefore, all the other ones are going to be pretty much the same as that, right? So that's 6, that's 15, right? So on and so on. Let me see if I can uh, change the color here. Oh, I went too far. <laughs> I started to look at the answers. I did not mean to. All right, let's get to, uh, there we go. Okay. So for this one, it's going to be 8 thirteenths. Right? And then for this one, it's 3. This one's 13. This one, that's 11. And so, like, going back to number 5 real quick, I mean, that's, that's a fraction, but it's still being multiplied by x. Right? So if you say 8 thirteenths times x, that's the same thing as 8 times x and then, like, divided by 13. So... Oh, excuse me. <sighs> Had a yawn come on. So then that's, you know, that's what that is. All right, number nine and number ten. So we've got four and nine. Okay, nothing too crazy going on there. For 11 and 12 is when it starts getting a little bit harder. 11 says y varies directly as x and y is equal to 5 halves when x is 15. Find y when x is 3. Okay. So there's an easy way and there's a hard way to do this. We'll talk about the hard way first and then we'll get into the easier way. If you, because, because in order to do the easy way, well, I guess really we're just going to do it the hard way first because that's how it's normally taught. And if it's not normally taught, like if you didn't learn it this way, then awesome. But uh, this is how it was taught to me. If y varies directly as x, then you have y is equal to kx. Right? That's why the constant of variation is the k. Okay. And y is equal to 5 halves when x is equal to 15. So then I we need to solve for k first, and I divide both sides by 15, and I get this, and so that goes like that, and that goes like that, and 5 over 15 is actually equal to uh, 1 third, and then I would just have 1 over 3 times 1 over 2, which is 1 over 6, and that's equal to k. All right, so then 1 over 6 is equal to k, and... Uh, that's not the answer, though, because we need to find y when x is equal to 3. So what we do is we say, okay, well, then y is equal to k, which we now know is 1 over 6, times x, which is 3. And then you do 3 over 6, which is 1 half. And then that's the answer. Okay, so that's the harder way to do it. That's how I was taught to do it. So it was sort of like step one, start off with your equation, y is equal to kx. Right, and then you plug in your x and your y, and then you solve for k, and then you plug in either an x or a y and your k, and solve for either x or y, whichever one you, you could know or whatever. <sighs> That's a long process, and uh, I mean, that works, but there's actually a, a better way, an easier way. You don't have to solve for k. Now, if they want you to do is solve for k, if they wanted you to tell them what the constant of variation was, then you would have to do it that way, like number 11. So we might do that again one more time just for practice there. But if you don't have to solve for the constant of variation, then you can actually just kind of set it up like a proportion. If y is 6 when x is 5, okay, find y when x is 10. Okay, well, if x is 10 and x used to be 5, then that means... So, so here's here's uh, one way to do it. You could do like this and then cross multiply. So we have we have y is 6 when x is 5, right? So y is up here, x is down here. And then find y when x is 10. So you can do this a few different ways, actually. Uh, and this is, this is the easier way, but the easier way has multiple different types of ways as well. So we could either, if the variable is on the top, you can just multiply both sides by 10. All right, so we multiply by 10 on both sides. That would cancel out the 10 over here. And then I would have 10 times 6 fifths over here. 10 over 5 is 2 times 6 is 12. So I'd get 12. Right? Or you can cross multiply. 
If I cross multiply, I would do 10 times 6 and 5 times y. Then I divide both sides by 5. And then 10 over 5 is 2. 2 times 6 is 12. And I get that. And then the last way. So this way is probably the fastest way to do it. And doing it this way, uh, you would actually just look for the pattern. So 5 to 10. 5 goes to 10 by timesing by 2. Now you could also say, oh, it will also add by 5, right? It's like, yeah, it does. But we're talking about proportions here. Uh, when you're talking about proportions, Portions are looking at whether things are multiplied or divided. It's not really looking at what's being added or subtracted. It's all about multiplying and dividing when you're talking about like proportions. So, 5 to 10, I would think, what, what, what can I times by? And if the answer's not easy, if it's like a decimal or a fraction, this method wouldn't be the best way to do it. But on this case, it's like, oh, well, 5 times 2. 5 times 2 is 10, right? So then 6 times 2, right? So so basically you just do this. You just go, okay, um, from 6 to y, what would I do versus from 5 to 10? So from 5 to 10, I times by 2. So from 6 to y, I would also times by 2. So y is 12. Bada bing, bada boom, and then you get the answer. Okay? Let's do one more way each uh, of, of like how I did it on number 11. So in order if to find the constant of variation, right, we'll look at one of each. So actually, let me do this. Let me start off and write it more on this side. So y varies directly with x, right? So step one, we get the formula out. Formula, okay? y is equal to kx. Then we plug in our stuff. y is 14 when x is 3. So we plug in, plug in, then we're going to solve for k, so we divide by 3, so we solve for k, solve for k. Once we solve for k, then we can find out what either y or x is, okay, so once we do that, then we take our k variable, and so we take our k variable, and we would, sorry, I got thrown off there, uh, solve for k, and then we plug it back in. So we plug k and the known variable back in. So we plug in, plug k and either x or y back in, whichever one we know. And then he solve for the other. Solve for the other. Right, so either x or y. Either y or x, I, I guess I should say. So we plug in either x or y, then we're solving for either y or x. Does that make sense? So we are on step four, because we solved for k. So we plug in x and uh, and k. So y is equal to k is 14 thirds and x is 6. All right, then we solve for the other thing. So uh, x over, or sorry, 6 over 3 is 2 times 12 is 28. So y is 28. And there we go. Next one, 14. If y varies directly as x and y uh, is equal to 3 when x is 18, find y when x is equal to 9. Okay, so now let's do it the other way, and we'll talk about the steps for this way. So then what we do is we set up the proportion, right? So we set up set up the proportion. Proportion. Right, I just fit it in there. So we set up our proportion, and in order to do that, we go, okay, well, then... Uh, y is equal to 3 when x is 18. Okay. We'll then find y when x is 9. All right. 
So we set up our proportion, and then we look for the pattern, right? So we look for the pattern. Look for uh, the pattern. Right, so we're either going to time or divide. Once we figure out whether we're timesing or dividing, we figure out by how much. And if that number is nice, then we can use that and figure out what the variable is going to be. So we look at the numbers on the bottom because we're trying to figure out what the pattern is for the top to get to y. But we, before we do that, we need to find out what the pattern is. Well, to get from 18 to 9, we would need to uh, divide by 2, right? So that's the pattern. We're dividing by 2, all right? Well, then you just repeat the pattern to get y. So you repeat the pattern. Repeat the pattern to get uh, either x or y, because we could be solving for either one, x or y. And so the pattern is that we divide by 2. So then up here, we would also divide by 2. 3 divided by 2 is 1.5. So 1.5 is the answer. All right. So now we're coming up on what I believe are the last few here. Yeah, we've only got six more. So we'll go ahead and change color one more time. And knock out the rest of these here at super speed. So y is 15 when x is 9. Find y when x is 3. OK, well, we would divide by 3. Divide by 3. So if I do that, then y would be 5. And actually, if we simplify this fraction, it would have been 5 thirds anyways. And then y would be 5 that way. So y is 5 either way. It's another way that you could solve it. It doesn't happen that often, though, so it's not really worth mentioning, I guess, as an official way to do it. But anyways, so the next one, y is 3 when x is 5. Find y when x is 15. All right, we times by 3. So we're going to times by 3. Y is 9. All right, next. So we have we have y is 15 when x is 3. Find y when x is 4. All right. On this one, this one you wouldn't normally be able to do because 3 times what is 4, right? That's not a nice number. But if I simplify this down a little bit, that would be 5 over 1. Since both of those divide by 3. And then I could figure it out because 1 times 4 times by 4 times by 4 there. 5 times 4 is 20. So 20 is equal to y. All right. Y is 2 when x is 4. Find y when x is 20. All right. So we times by 5 times by 5. And uh, so y is 10. And we'll go ahead and just use the same color for the last two here. Or maybe not. Surprise, we're going to use yellow. And we're also going to increase the thickness a little bit because yellow is hard to see. Uh, OK, y is 3 when x is 7. So find y when x is 14. All right, so we times by 2, so y is 6. All right, see how easy this method is? y is 16 when x is 2. Find y when x is 4. We times by 2, y is 32. And there you have it, folks. So that's it. That's it. So that, that is how you do it. That's the trick method, um, as well as the other method that I learned when I first learned how to do this kind of stuff. And there you go. So if this was helpful, you can see other videos like this in the series on Algebra 1 worksheet videos, as well as a bunch of content like the uh, all of the answers and the, the solutions and stuff that I work out. I, uh, I save all of those. I'm going to have them all on my website. Uh, so you can go check that out. That's on my website. And if when you first get to the website, the first thing you'll see is a free guide called The Five Math Mistakes Everyone Makes and How to Avoid Them. It's a little PDF guide I put together so that you can know, well, how to not make any more math mistakes. It's just a general guide. It's good for any math class. So anybody in any math class can benefit from it. And uh, just go check it out and let me know what you think. And I'll see you guys in another episode real soon.